Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Prime Time, which, like I said right up front, is on Kickstarter right now. So if you'd like to know more about it, you know, what the stretch goals are, what the final components look like, you know, ask questions of the creator designer, well, you can hit the little I up in the top right corner of the screen and go check out the Kickstarter page. But I am here now to tell you what Jen and I thought of Prime Time having played it now. And first off, this game is heavy. Heavy duty. I mean, there is so. I mean, if you are looking for a really heavy business Euro sim, that's one of the reasons you might want to consider this game. Oh, well, first of all, right off the bat, before I get to that, the theme is just wonderfully integrated. I mean, the game really comes alive. There's a lot of really fun flavor text on all the cards. Those are fun to read. And um, you know, all the actions you get to do feel very, very grounded in reality. I mean, you really do feel like you're making decisions that a network scheduling executive would have to make, dealing with external forces that they would have to do. Um, and, 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 and everything just works really, really nice. Uh, and you know, probably, my, Jen's my favorite thing about the game was you know the ratings war section, where you go through night by night and you see how well every show did. And, you know, and I just love summing up, uh, well, yeah, it looks like uh, people are really uh, losing interest in golf, aren't they? Now that that new soap opera moved over to Monday night. I mean, it's just those kinds of things are, are just really interesting. And I have to admit, I'm a TV junkie through and through. So I've always been interested in, you know, about how shows get rated. And I've always wanted to be a Nielsen family. Oh, my gosh, I would so love to do that. Um, but uh, it's just... Uh, the, you know, the theme really comes to life, and it is a very, very heavy business simulation that is as, as thematic as something, you know, it, it kind of reminds me of Vinos in that regard, or Kanban, really, really heavy game, where all the content of the game, all the mecha mechanisms, all the decisions you make are very heavily influenced by theme. And on top of that, it's a really cool theme. Really, really love it. Now, another thing about this game is it is very tactical, and very cutthroat because I mean, you know, it is you know it's a bloodbath trying to get your shows into the right position to get the most cubes because you know there's five areas you are fighting on in well in a, in a two player game four because there's only four nights of the week but in the, with more players there's five nights of the week each one of those is a battleground where you are trying to deploy your best show with the best talent. <clears throat> that is perfectly matched up for the audience that's there, the audience that's coming in the future, and the audience that you have tweaked and manipulated by using PR and moving stuff around. And there is so much thought that goes into mixing and matching shows and talents once so you can get you know, the, the star power of your show up, but also, which by the way, I'm, I'm not sure, I, I call it star power, I think it's got a different name for um, you know, like hit potential, I forget what it is. But I mean, basically, trying to get the star power of your shows up so that you can get first dibs on more cubes, and so you can also score more in the award ceremonies and on the hotness track is a big, big deal. But um, you know, sometimes you just have to forego getting the star power just to get the right shows on the right night to take advantage of what's already there, or to maybe slip into a place where nobody else you know can get in at all because you know I've got the right show for this audience, nobody else does, so this night is mine, and I'll just cruise to victory on it. Um, you know, but the thing is, this audience through the PR action is constantly potentially changing as audience members move around from night to night. And the penalty for not finding even a little bit of audience is, you know, it's backbreaking. I mean, I didn't, it didn't happen in the run-through I just did. But if you get yourself into a bad situation and one of your shows gets canceled, that's it. Doesn't matter if you paid 12 bucks to get that show, it's gone. And all you get as a compensation is, well, at least you get to rerun it once, but that's it. And um, so you are really planning and plotting and using PR with an eye towards trying to get these other shows off the air entirely because that can be a really big debilitator to your opponents. And so the thing is, the landscape, the targets are always changing as more and more stuff comes out, and you can't be quite certain where, unless you're last in turn order, where all, where all your opponent shows are going to be so that you can plan. But heck, if you're first in turn order, well, you at least get the benefit of getting first dibs on all the cubes that are there that you are um, available to get. So it, it, everything just works, but it's heavy. It's very tactical because the situation is always changing and it is a very aggressive cutthroat game as you're really trying to undercut your opponents every step of the way. And so you've got, and it's incredibly thematic. Those I would say are the four things that define this game. 
heavy theme, heavy um, cutthroat, heavy tactics because the world's always changing, and just plain heavy, complex, trying to manipulate um, and control all these different variables that are going on that are constantly shifting. And so, if that's the kind of game you're looking for, you should really consider this and check it out on Kickstarter. Now, for me and Jen, just the cutthroat name, we were kind of bummed how cutthroat it was. It's just a little bit too much for us. But then on top of that, for Jen, it was very, very difficult to deal with the weight of this game combined with the tactics. There, there, there is long-term strategy in this game, to be sure. Don't, you know, uh, you know, don't, uh, don't ignore the fact that there's a lot of points to be had for building a strategy that will let you score really, really well um, when it comes around to award ceremony time. But tactics rule the day because the audience is constantly changing, constantly in flux. And for Jen, it was a real problem to have so much depth of planning, but for so much of it to just be tactical. And so that was a real problem for her too. I mean, me, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit, but I tend to be more of a tactical gamer, whereas Jen is more of a strategic gamer. She wants more long-term planning and long-term payoff. I love being fast and fluid and responsive to constantly changing scenarios. So that's what prime time offers. And, um, and that's it. I mean, the, the, again, the, the mechanisms work absolutely fantastically. If I had any complaints about the game, I think it is a little bit of a bummer that the default game, I think maybe there's some stretch goals, but the default game is only going to come with three of each of the board members. You know, I'd love there to be five or even, you know, six of each of the board members. I mean, there's still enough variety so that every time you're going to get a different set of target goals, but I would love to see even more of these. Plus, I do think it's kind of a shame that the uh, hotness track doesn't play more of a role in two-player. Because there's only, uh, you know, at most over the course of the game, there's only two points to be had. Whereas with more players, the hotness track becomes much more hotly contested. So it's kind of a bummer that that isn't as big a deal. But even if it's not, there's still reasons to go for getting the star power shows up. Um, but anyway, that uh, you know, you know, between getting enough money, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, otherwise, I, I think the game works really, really well. It's smart. It plays. Uh, actually, I guess that's another thing too. The very first round is the toughest one. Because when somebody sits down, okay, I've got all my shows, I'm trying to figure out which ones I put on Monday or Tuesday, there is a lot of thinking that goes on there. And if you have an AP prone player, that is something you have to be um, cognizant of. Now, the interesting thing is, while Bob, the first player, is spending a lot of time thinking, well, I guess I could put this on Tuesday, I could put this person on here and this person on there, and you know, they're thinking, everybody else gets to be thinking as well. Because everybody should be thinking about what their ideal night for their shows are. And so, if you've got um, people who are good about planning for their turns while it's somebody else's turn, I don't think AP will drag it down. But if you play with a bunch of players who, you know, just kind of, oh, I just chit chat, oh, is it my turn? What am I, oh, let me figure it out. The game is really gonna drag because you need to be spending a lot of your, this game really puts you through the grinder, puts your brain through the grinder, and you need to, um, you know, th this is not a game where you're gonna be having a lot of light chit chat around the table because everybody needs to have all their effort, all their focus at all times, thinking about, well, can I get this one? If I can't get this one, can I get this one? Which, which show would this go on? Which night would this, or you know, which talent would go on this show? Which night should this show go on? Should I move another show out of the way to make room for this show? Should I use PR to put more stuff you know, on that night so it'll be better for this show? Etc. Etc. Every turn, even if somebody else is taking a long time, it shouldn't be too much of a problem because there is a lot for you to think about, even when it's not your turn. So much, you, you, your, your gears are constantly grinding in this game. But it is something I would warn you about too, if you've got a lot of people who just, you know, kind of wait for their turn and want quick, simple turns. This game, again, is very challenging, very demanding of your gray matter. And so you got to know that going in. So that's something else. I, I don't view, I don't mention that as a detriment to the game at all. I think it's a strength of the game, but you just got to know that going in, depending on what type of players you play with. And that, folks, is prime time. Now, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, let me know. If I made any mistakes, my apologies, but they will get noted up. Be sure to watch with annotations turned on. If you can't watch annotations, look at the show notes. You'll see all the errors I made because Paulo is awesome. And that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, let me know. Otherwise, talk to you later. Have a very nice day. So long. Oh, bye-bye.